everybody. Welcome back to Mob Pop Sports. This is Grandy. If this is your first time here, welcome. Appreciate you guys checking out the channel, checking out this video. If you guys are returning, welcome back. Hopefully everybody had a great weekend. Uh, sorry, I, I told you guys I wasn't going to be recording this weekend. It was a, a very long weekend and uh, it was a great weekend at the Denver Card Show. So shout out to the organizer, John, and everybody at the Denver Card Show uh, for setting that up. And all the people who came out, all the vendors, uh, all the people, collectors, um, just it, it was um, it was a great show. I felt like it was a, an amazing show. If, you, if you've never been to it, uh, make sure you guys check it out. I think they do five or six shows a year. Uh, this was the biggest one, so next year, usually they, the biggest one is a three-day show, so it was a, definitely a long weekend and everything. So uh, it was my first in-person show in quite some time. Uh, I haven't done a in-person show uh, probably almost a year now. So that it was super fun. Uh, I missed it and definitely going to do it again. Uh, I think it's something, um, I, I definitely enjoy whether it was talking with the kids, uh, you know, negotiating and, and just, you know, doing deals, stuff like that. I enjoy that stuff. It was super fun. My daughter enjoyed it. She was there for an entire day. Uh, I believe on Saturday she was there. So, uh, this is just a recap of the show and everything. Uh, I'll get into it in a second here, but yeah, my daughter was there the entire day. Super fun. Uh, she was there for like, sh shit, probably like 10 hours. It was kind of crazy. Helped me set up. And she was running around doing Pokemon deals, doing the, you know, uh, the trading up challenge. Uh, her uh, she, her friend, uh, our cousin met up there and she was, she had a great time. So it was, it was super cool to see her there the entire day with me uh, while I was doing, you know, deals and everything. Super fun. Uh, like I said, guys, if you guys never been to the demo show, make sure you guys check it out. Uh, I think a couple more shows this year, but it's going to be at the new location, I think in Thornton. So uh, I'll probably be setting up a table. So super fun. So. Let's get into the gist of things. I'll try not to make this video too long, but I'll recap the uh, the show, my thoughts, my opinions, uh, what is you know transpiring in the hobby, all that good stuff. Just um, from what I learned uh, or what I've gained in regards to the the show in itself. So. The comparison from doing a show in Denver in comparison to the show I did in the Midwest and Iowa before, uh, a little bit different. I think uh, just the population is just more obviously. So in the you know Colorado Denver area, I think a lot more people are traveling from the West Coast, a little bit south of whether it's Arizona, up north, they're coming down here. Uh, and then just the population in Denver and Colorado in itself is just a little bit higher than Iowa. So I felt like there was a, a more traffic, more presence more people uh so i'm not saying it's better or worse i'm just saying it's just more traffic more people uh just because it's a more population so it was a bigger show uh, i felt like um i you know the three days it was perfectly amount of days uh i was a little bit nervous a lot of people were saying uh you know sunday is going to be a bad day it's going to be super slow in my in, or Friday was gonna be super slow because you know people work and it's just the evening. So this is my experience, at least from this initial show. I felt like all three days, the first two hours were bangers for me. Uh, those were the times that it was for the VIP people, of course. Uh, but even beyond that, it was for dealers making deals. Uh, other people, I made probably the most deals in the first two hours, the biggest deals that is, in the first two hours on both days. So all three or three days, I'm sorry, on all three days. So in the first two hours, I made the biggest deals, and everything else was gravy for me after that. I literally made. Uh, my money and everything and, and you know paying you know covering my day's expense covering for my inventory covering for uh, the table all that stuff all within that first two hours of each day and then everything else was just kind of icing on the cake for me so to me I enjoyed the show and I had a good time I I, I did really well uh, I think I exceeded far more than what I actually anticipated. I wasn't going to anticipate to make that amount of, uh, of deals um, and sell that amount of inventory. So I sold a lot of inventory. Keep in mind, the only inventory I brought to this show was just slabs and wax and some, just some old wax here. There wasn't even crazy. And I moved a lot of both. That was a crazy thing. Uh, I, I definitely did that. A lot of people were doing the bulk deals, so that was good for me, at least at the beginning. And then throughout the day, it was just like one, two, three, four cards here and there, uh, some lower end cards, some lower end uh, uh, slabs and stuff like that. So uh, this is my thing too. I found out a lot of, there was about, 
maybe about 20 to 30 percent of dealers there who felt like this show was a bust for them uh there was about 50 to 60 percent that felt like it was a great show for them and then the, the rest of them maybe 10 15 percent felt like it was a an okay show uh so but what i found out is this the people who felt like it was a great show was willing to wheel and deal negotiate and they were willing to you know come down on their prices uh the people who felt like they didn't have a good show packed up left early on certain days or whatever come to find out because i asked them i asked the, the people who went to those booths like how are their prices and they said all their prices were well above comps and they were barely moving on anything so if you're not going to do a show and you're not willing and if you're looking to move stuff this is the this is the thing that I've, i figured out I, I told you guys in my previous videos, I was comping everything pretty much at comps and also giving me a little bit of room to move 10 to 15, 20% if I needed to, uh, to move inventory. Uh, I, you know, because I don't pay the eBay fees or shipping fees, I'm able to be more lenient on my pricing. And then, you know, the buyers, I was explaining to some of the buyers that they're not paying taxes or whatever the case may be they're, if they're just paying on cash. So there you guys go. So I kind of, um, I felt like that was critical for me to have a good weekend. I was definitely willing to wheel and deal. Uh, those first hour, two hours every day, what I was doing was bulk deals. I mean, guys were buying probably anywhere between about 20 to 40 slabs off of me, 20 to 40 slabs on three days straight. So I'm just letting you guys know, I was definitely willing to negotiate with them. I definitely gave them a deal. They got a hell of a deal, but you have to understand, I moved 20 to 30 slabs and I know I profited, guys. It wasn't like uh, these slabs were, you know, 10 bucks, tw you know, 12 bucks, all of them like that, where it cost me, you know, 16, 17, 18 bucks to, you know, slab them. Some of these slabs were 100, $150 slabs, 40, $50 slabs that I'm selling at $30, or those $150 slabs I might be selling at 110, 120 twenty dollars when they buy it in bulk i was willing to negotiate i mean people are like you leave me so much money on the table you know my thoughts are you know i already told you guys i am not greedy when it comes to profit margin if i'm going to be able to profit 20 to 30 percent uh overall i'm gonna do that man that's just the way i run my business i don't tell you how to run your business i don't tell other people how to run it but that's how i do it and that's how i'm going to continuously do it if it's successful for me so uh that's what i did i i was willing to negotiate with these guys who buying these big big lots if they're buying 20 30 slabs with me i am definitely going to be at down 20 to 30 percent off of the comps i'm still making margin plenty of margin uh and they will come back and know me so a lot of them remember me will know me next time they want to do the same deal i'll give them a great deal once again keep in mind i'm going to give them a great deal because then they have plenty of margin to whether they're going to resell or do their own lots on down the road it's just a, a natural cycle of business and i felt like that's that's what i did and it worked for me a lot of those people who felt like they had a bad show like I just said, they were priced above comps and they were, weren't willing to budge too much when I was asking uh, some of these people who went to these tables. So, you know, go to figure. Uh, other people who who I think said they had an okay time or it was just an okay was, um, it does matter about location of your tables. Uh, I felt like my table was situated in an okay spot. I was at the very, very, very far back, straight from the entrance. So it was kind of in the middle. So the, I got people who, you know, when you come into a card show, you go to the right, go to the left with it. I felt like it was a good spot for me, kinda. Number one, cause people can wrap around and then, you know, they come to me in the middle. However, there was kind of a wall next to me, which kind of stunk cause I was right next to PSA, which I think may have helped me too, but there's PSA was kind of on the other side of the wall. So they were super busy. So they had tons of people over there, obviously submitting cards to get graded. Uh, so maybe they come over and see me or whatever the case may be, but the wall, I felt like it was kind of a neg Debbie Downer negative, I felt. Um, it kind of blocked a little bit. But like I said, other locations, other people I spoke with who said they had an okay time, they just felt like uh, their location of their table was just not the greatest traffic. Uh, they were at a super corner or whatever the case may be. Uh, so I think that definitely helps and matters. I think the people who are very in the front, right at the front door, it's pro and con. People who first are coming into the show, they, they don't necessarily just buy right off the bat. So they like to look and then wrap around, whatever the case may be. But at least those people at the very front get the last eyes before those people leave too. So people who are like, oh, I gotta buy something before I leave or something like that. So 
Location plays a role on your table location. The size of your table definitely matters. Uh, I've seen a lot of people who had, you know, two two uh, booths or a booth or two or whatever uh, did very well. I mean, because you, the more tables you have, the more opportunity you have to put more uh, inventory out for people to see. So they, there you guys go. If you guys are looking to ever do a show, um, take to all that stuff into consideration. The bigger the booth, bigger and the, the more tables, the higher cost you're gonna pay. However, the more inventory you're able to show. So it's one of those things. Also trying to figure out the location of your table, you know, of, of where your booth is gonna be. Talking to people, telling people this was a this is a great thing. Huge shout out to everybody who came out and said hi to me and say you guys watch this channel, watch my uh, my YouTube channel, dude. You guys. From the bottom of my heart, my daughter was like, dad, that was the coolest thing ever. Uh, so you guys are coming up saying hi, hey, love your channel, love your content, appreciate you and what I do and, and all that stuff. Dude, um, I like I said, words could, can't express how much, I, I definitely appreciate that and it, it definitely uh, made my day, made my daughter say, she's like, that's so cool, dad, that they, they know us and you know, all that stuff. So uh, I just want you guys to know, you guys definitely made her day on that, on that Saturday, you know, just seeing people that, that know her or know us in our channel. So that was super cool. Uh, other than that though, uh, what sold, what moved the most? I felt like football. Football was moving quite a bit more than I anticipated. So football definitely moved. Basketball was moving, um, but not at the pace of football. I still felt like base of uh, football was moving uh, out the door. Uh, it was just moving left and right. Deals were being made, made for football. Basketball, Wimby was the only thing I felt like it was really, really moving. My Jordans moved. Um, you know, some older Kobe's might have moved a couple of them, but most in basketball was either Wimby or maybe a few Steph Curry's here and there, or some of the you know Caitlin Clark things like that. You know, the the, the current stars. Uh, so I, I moved a couple of LeBrons here and there, but primarily it was just Wimby. I, I think I sold out all of my Wimbies that I brought there, so that was a good thing. Uh, but football, man, I was moving football left and right, so. The show was all about football, I felt like, at least for me, other people, probably baseball. Baseball was asked about a bit. Uh, and then obviously the lo you know location being in Denver, uh, I, I sold a lot of Denver, you know, the Joker's cards. A lot of people came up and asked me about Denver stuff. I don't really have too much, but the ones I did have moved a bit. So just play to your location, wherever the show was at. Um, you're gonna get people who are obviously fans or interested in that specific area. So just to let you guys know. Uh, and then other than that, man, like I said, if you're gonna do a show in my eyes, if you're gonna spend three days, your full three days there, if you're gonna spend money to rent the table, in my opinion, you better be there to make deals and make sales. Because if not, you just wasted a whole weekend um, because you're in reality stuck on your pricing or whatever the case may be and you're not even paying you're wasting money you're wasting time time is precious in my opinion time is priceless so if you can spend the time there you better be making money you better be making sales you better be making deals or you better be buying stuff and this was a great time to buy i saw a lot of people buying there's a lot of buying people are wondering is the economy bad has it really affected uh, i didn't see it i saw tons of money being uh, being transacted on. Uh, I saw many deals. I mean, I'm talking about five uh, five figure deals. Plenty of five figure deals that were being done left and right. Uh, I was doing. You know, I don't have super high end cars, so no five figure deal here. But I was doing a few four figure figure deals. So there you guys go on that. Let you guys know. Show the hobby is strong. I feel. I felt like. Uh, I didn't feel like there was a dip in it at all. My opinion, others may feel different. I don't know. So if you were at the Denver show, let me know what you guys thought. I thought it was a great show. I thought there was lots of inventory, different types of inventory. Pokemon was hot. Uh, I had a buddy, uh, my cousin, or actually my wife's cousin that was there with her son. And they, you know, they actually had a buddy, had a booth and they did nothing but Pokemon and they killed it, smashed it. So Pokemon's hot. Uh, I saw a lot of WWE stuff was doing good. Soccer did good. I moved some soccer wax that I never figured I'd ever move. Um, it was good, man. I'm telling you guys. Let me know what do you guys think. I'll let you guys know the next show is in a month from now. So I'll probably do that show. It's going to be a two day show. It's a little bit smaller up in Thornton, Colorado. So make sure you guys stop by there. Most likely I'll get a table uh, and I'll see what I can do. I'm going to try and ramp up my inventory once again. We'll see uh, if I'm just going to do slabs, wax. I don't know yet. I'll figure that part out. But other than that, man, uh, super fun. 
uh, I enjoyed it. I can't wait to do it again. Super tiring. If people are wondering, hey, uh, the, my last video, I, I, I got some love and I got some hate. All good, man. Bring it on, guys. I, I brush it off on my shoulder. I don't take anything personal. However, if you guys don't think this shit is work, you've never sold shit in your life, then I kid you not. Go and try and sell stuff for eight to 10 hours a day on your feet and you tell me that's not work. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not just talking about physical labor work. I'm talking about mental negotiating deals some things falls due to crack some deals happen sales you got people asking some freaking you know wind window shopping people looking touching shit I'm telling you guys go and try and sell stuff for 10 hours straight and tell me that's not working for three days straight trust me man it, it was it's a lot of work uh people don't understand uh when you're selling sports cards for a full-time living and then doing these shows and everything it takes it, it drains you man it takes time away from the family here and there it takes time away from um your day-to-day -day stuff and then and i'm telling you guys and, and negotiating doing deals it's a lot of work man mental math if you're not good at math see you can't be doing sales either so there you guys go i'm telling you guys it, it, it's a lot of work but it was super fun i wouldn't change it for the world i can't wait for the next one uh this week if you guys are wondering i'm gonna be grinding uh away and uh, i'm gonna be listing some new stuff i got some new inventory coming in a lot of uh just raw stuff i'm gonna be listing this week so there you guys go uh i think i might have another submission from psa coming in here in the next couple days so i'll see how that one turns out i don't know if i'm gonna do an opening or not i got so many haters on that too jeez man i swear man youtube right go figured <laughs> i don't even care though so i i really do enjoy this i enjoy this hobby it's super fun guys so other than that man get out there go check your if you're not from this area go check out a local show super fun have a good time go buy some cars support the hobby support the local businesses that's my biggest thing uh support a lot of those local businesses because uh without them they don't make the economy run i feel like so other than that man have a good rest of the day uh if you guys like this stuff feel free to subscribe if you haven't subscribed you guys listen to me babble for a long ass time but i still appreciate you watching the video other than that man uh oh check out the ebay store links in the description do not Go without checking my eBay store. Every little bit helps me. Uh, feel free to make an offer, guys. I learned that, man. Until next time, have a good one.